Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and it is March the 1st. And so, uh, first order of business is, uh, we're going to go through, I'll show you the finances uh, from February. And then we're going to get our uh, fermenting silos set up and get started on our hay harvest. Okay, so, first of all... Um, uh, okay, hold on a sec. Mm, I need to be, oh, sorry. I need to be actually inside of a vehicle so I can get my cursor out. Uh, I wanted to move this thing over here. It's a course play message thingamadoodle. Um, all right, so yeah, let's take a look at our finances. So let's see. So in February, uh, we made uh, $119,391 off of our greenhouses. So it, it, it's like I, I had mentioned, you know, I was expecting around $120,000 a month. If we look at the price of lettuce in particular, because that's really the, the main one that counts here, um, you can see that in February it had dropped down to here. So February and March and even April, you know, the, the price is kind of in the mid-range. And then, of course, it's we're going to see less and less as the year progresses. But then come October, it's going to start shooting back up again. Okay, so, yeah, around $120,000 that uh, we got from the greenhouses, which is awesome. Uh, that brings our money up to $257,000 at the moment. And let's see, I did in, uh, before I rolled out of January, I did pay... My workers, uh, I, I paid my pallet moving worker $6,400 because I had forgotten to pay them in December. And then I gave, uh, I estimated that I had, let's see, about 30-ish loads of between the bales and the pallets that we moved in January. Um, so that's $3,000 that go to my workers. And then I gave each worker a $1,000 bonus. So I, so I deducted an additional $5,000 for that in uh, January before we moved out of January. And then um, in February, uh, so basically I, I didn't, I don't think I did anything in February in terms of spending any money other than just the normal stuff that comes out per month. But what I want to look at is uh, this figure here, because remember we had adjusted that factor to just have the game pay our 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 farm hands essentially um so i set that factor to 10 and i i figured out what that actually means the the factor and if you guys mentioned this in the comments i haven't seen the comments yet for that video by the way uh but when it's set to one it's just basically multiplying um the default uh factor that that the game uses to deduct the the production costs, uh, so if it's it's one, it's the same basically because one times one is one, right? Um, so when I adjusted it to ten, we're basically being charged um, uh, times ten. So we're multiplying that that by ten. So we're pay, we're paying you know uh, my brain's not working this morning. It's basically multiplied by ten is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so that came out to twelve hundred and twelve dollars, which I still think is too low because we were paying thirty two hundred dollars uh, to our workers. So what we're gonna do uh, for that is we're gonna go to revamp. I wonder why that always resets back to eight ninety nine. I don't know. And we're gonna set this to. Th whoops, didn't mean to do that. We're gonna set this to thirty. And in doing so, I think what that's gonna do then is that's going to come pretty close to deducting, uh, actually, it might even go over a little bit, uh, about $3,200 a month and get us back to more or less where we were before. And again, I explained this in the last video, but we're no longer moving massive amounts of pallets, but instead we have massive amounts of greenhouses that need to be you know, cared for. So, so I'm still, I still have to pay you know, a, a worker to do that. Really, and in, in, in considering how many greenhouses we have, it's probably even multiple workers, but I'm just going to keep it the way it is. I'm not going to make it complicated. Okay, so I, I'll expect this figure to be around $3,200 um, at the end of March. And, you know, again, if, it, if it's too high or not high enough or whatever, we'll, we'll make further adjustments to that. But the nice thing about it is now it's automated and I don't have to remember to do that because, you know, I, I <laughs> forget to remember to do that. 
Uh, okay, so so far in March, uh, what time is it? It's it's only a little after eight o'clock in the morning, and we've already made twelve thousand um, dollars from the from you know just the selling because the, the the way the game works is it basically sells at the top of the hour. Um, so you know I don't know if we're making twelve thousand dollars an hour or if that's you know I'm not sure what time it it starts doing that in the morning, but nevertheless. Um, we've, we've already pulled in, uh, and half thousand dollars, you know, just, and we haven't even started the day yet. So that's amazing. I love it. Uh, okay. So that's pretty much, uh, where we are sitting in terms of our finances. And, uh, yeah, I'm, lo I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it. Oh, you know what? I forgot to turn my head tracker on. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let me fix that. Hold on a second. Okay. Um, before we actually get started with the silos, uh, I also head tracking working. Yes, it is. I also uh, prepped the border around uh, the greenhouses. Ah, oh, man, gotta fix the steering wheel again. It. I still haven't figured out what the deal is with my my steering wheel. Sometimes it starts up at. The 270 degree rotation, which is what I use for Farming Simulator. And sometimes it starts up with the 900 degree rotation, which I don't even know why anybody would want that much rotation in a wheel. So anyway, I, <laughs> but I haven't, I haven't figured out why, you know, what, how to get it to, to stay consistent is kind of what I'm saying. Anyway, I went around um, the border of the greenhouses on the property that we own and I plowed it, de-stoned it, limed it, and now I've got um, some seed and fertilizer in here because I figured well, we might as well just plant some grass along here and give ourselves just a little bit of extra uh, yield. So let's get that done first. Turn some lights on. And I've, I've got some fertilizer in the cedar too. Let's head on over here and we're going to, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of, we're going to sell our round bale storage. Uh, I don't see myself needing to use this anymore. And if, you know, if the time comes that we do, we can buy it again. It's not that expensive. So I'm going to just park the tractor over here for now. And we're gonna we're gonna sell that, and then we need to do a little bit of landscaping to get uh, prepared for this. Uh, before we do anything else, let's uh, save the game, and I want to make sure auto save is off so I control when the saving happens. 
because you know if you keep it on automatic and you make a mistake and then it saves then you're kind of kind of host okay um, I'm gonna stand back a little bit further too so first thing is is we're gonna click on this we're gonna sell we'll get twenty one point eight thousand dollars for it I think it's thirty five thousand dollars to buy it new if we need it again at some point okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the leveling tool and we're gonna this is fairly level but I want to extend out a little bit further and I want to get rid of all this sh shrubbery so we should be able to accomplish that um, I don't think I want the square tool though just kind of looking here to see what, what we want as our starting point probably right right about here is good okay so let's move this over oh this doesn't get rid of shrubs I thought it would I know the painting does okay in that case um, let's go to painting and I think we'll just use the the gravel texture Okay, now uh, let's go back to sculpting, and we need to do some more leveling here. Let's uh, increase the size of this. I don't want to level all the way into the ditch here, but we we're gonna need this to be a a drivable path based upon how I'm going to set things up so okay let's start with that um, I'm gonna soften this up a little bit here and we'll go back to painting and uh, change that to a circle or bring that up a little bit and just kind of fix this little area here okay let's start with this and we'll see if this works so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, once again save and we're gonna go with the uh, we're gonna go into silos and we're gonna use the this uh, fermenting silo here okay so this is a hundred thousand dollar fermenting silo it holds it holds a little over five hundred thousand liters I can't remember what the exact number is but it's 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 a little over five hundred thousand um, liters now the reason I'm going with this one is because it's a hundred thousand dollars the next one up is twice the price, but it only has 900 and some odd thousand liters. So two of these will hold more than one of those, right? Um, so, so that's why I'm, I'm go opting with the concrete instead of the metal. Now, the advantage of the metal silo is that it, it'll ferment faster, but we don't really need fast fermentation because, you know, we're just putting it in there. We're going to store it for the whole year and not even really touch it until... January except for well we will have to pull some out you know for feeding the cows but that won't be a big deal um, so so that's why it, it seems to me like it's better to have more of these for the same money than these and, and we get more storage space okay so that's why we're gonna go with that now um, the way that I want to set this up is I want the uh, the filling to be on this side let's uh, zoom out a little bit more so we can kind of see what the deal is here and as far as the angle goes I think we'll make sure it's on the same angle as this bridge because we're gonna and it looks like it is 
pretty much on the same angle as the bridge as far as I can tell. All right, guys, um, I ended up reloading uh, the, the save because, well, let's just say mistakes were made. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, it got bad, so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to start over. So, oh, what did we do? All right. So first thing is, is we're gonna, we're gonna remove these trees, and I'll probably end up replanting some of them after we get everything else set up, because you know I don't want to remove all of my trees. I like my trees, but these particular ones are in the way, and as we all know, it's not at all worth my time or rental, rental money to try and harvest that stuff and go sell it, because it's just not worth crap. Uh, all right, so we got that done. Now, in order for me to place the silos the way that I want to place them, we're going to need to use free mode. And that means we want to make really, uh, really make sure that the ground is nice and level. Because when you use free mode, you if the ground's not level, you could end up um, burying the trigger and then it doesn't work right. Okay, so let's just run this along here again. A little bit more and I actually want to raise that corner up a bit more too and just make sure this is fully level here I can do some softening and stuff like that later if necessary but right now just want to make sure everything in the area that the silos is going to be is smooth as a baby's butt Okay, that should be good. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do next is we're going to take our first silo. I'm going to do, I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier or not, but we're going to do two silos now, and then we'll add more later on as we, as we progress. Uh, so let's grab the concrete silo here, and we're going to turn it this way so the load in is in the back and the um, unload is in the front. Okay, we're going to turn off collision detection with the V key. And the one thing that concerns me about this setup is if this trigger overlaps with the trigger on the barn. And if that does cause a problem, I'll probably end up moving the hay barn over, over to this area here. But let's just try it first, and we'll just see how, how it works. But the idea, again, is to put four of these silos in over here. So actually, before I before I do that, let's do a little bit more work here. We're going to sell this bridge and re, uh, redo it. Uh, I want to get rid of... Uh, these shrubs here. In fact, we can just kind of paint all of this at least up to there. Let's also raise that up a little more because there's a bit of a dip there. Okay. I wish it would stay on the last thing I left it on. Okay, now let's go back to uh, buildings, silos, grab our, our stave silo. And I'm thinking right about here-ish is where we want to start with the first one. Maybe move it this way a little more, too. Okay. And then the second one we will put next to it. So we'll do the second one here, the third one here, and the fourth one here. And probably... I think it's thinks it's overlapping with the barn, not the other silo. Yep. 
if we do that, I'm just I'm I'm just thinking about the spacing for the future. So we do that one there, and this one probably here. Yeah, that should work. I think that's good spacing there. Cool. Okay, now next thing. Uh, let's go back to landscaping and painting and get this texture. And we want to remove uh, these shrubs here. Because we're going to put the bridge going across this way. We can, however... Put some shrubs back in here in this spot just to make it look a little nicer a little more natural I don't want to overdo it on that though either okay good now let's save at this point because everything is currently where I want it to be so that way I can reload again if I screw this up <laughs> um, this was I had gotten this far uh, before, but when I was, you know, trying to work with the bridge here, um, I accidentally messed up my hayfield and it wasn't going so well. So that's when I decided to redo this. Okay, so let's go back to here. Now, if we if we go to decoration and others, what if we try this longer bridge? No, I don't really like that because it's cutting into the field. So we're, we're going to make this bridge work. And actually, that's not a bad spot right there. Um, I don't like that. Let's just look at it. It's a little bit high on this side is the only problem. So I think we should maybe... Do it from this end instead because i'd rather you know lower this down uh, and adjust this side than this side because this side's nice and level and we want to keep it that way for the cell points or, or i mean for the load load point so let's move this around here and we're probably going to have to go remove the collision from that too These bridges can be kind of weird to work with. You can't... There's there's only one side of the bridge that adjusts with the height. I suppose we could try that. It's, it's a little further into the trigger than I would like it to be, though. So, all right. This is where things starting to become a pain in the butt. <laughs> Last side, too. Uh, let's see if we can very carefully just lower this area down, but try and keep it somewhat smooth. All right, now let's try it again. Decoration, other bridge. Okay, that's not bad if we can get it to, if I can get this to behave over here. Um, the problem I was having before was that there was like a little dip in the center here, and I couldn't get the dip itself raised up properly. But, actually, okay, looks like we're maybe making it happen here. That's not bad. That is not bad. All right, let's test it. Seem to have decent enough clearance. And it's reasonably smooth.
this is a load area too so that means we don't have to worry about uh, trailers tripping uh, tripping <laughs> tipping because um, it's going to be loading so the trailers will stay closed here's where they're going to tip but there's no clearance issues you know no overhead clearance issues here so that shouldn't be a problem at all and this is nice and smooth coming through here yeah okay so now what I want to do is I want to do another bridge going through here so that way they just have a nice smooth straight path uh, going over the ditch and this one might warrant the the longer bridge just because it's a little bit longer area so let's get back here the other thing I could do is just raise the ground and you know pretend I'm putting a culvert underneath it but I, I kind of like the bridge idea better so all right let's save again okay so we're gonna want to once again remove the shrubs that's probably good there okay let's go to decoration others let's grab the longer bridge and yeah I think this is definitely the right move here with the longer bridge so we're gonna want that to be right about there except for uh, what if we turn it this way hmm all right we're gonna need to raise the ground a little bit here for this to work right because that seems to be about I think that's about flush with the if I go this way it buries it in the concrete or gravel let's set that in place there oh yeah see that's perfect on this side okay so now we just need to raise the ground here enough to make this work yeah see it cuts into my field too which I don't particularly appreciate But you know what? That's not too bad, really. Smooth it just a little tiny bit there and there. Let's see. Um, let's try that this bump out and see if it's acceptable. Oh, yeah. That, that's not a big deal at all. I think I think this will work <clears throat> I think this will work because this is where they'll come to to tip the the grass into the silo excellent okay so I think we're in business here uh, in terms of getting the silos themselves set up uh, I'm gonna smooth this just a touch here back, back up a little Excuse me. Okay, I think that's good. You know, excuse me. We should probably put a bridge over here too. This is supposed to be a... Either that or we raise the ground up there and just say there's a culvert down there more for realism than for functionality because it's functional you know what though if i'm gonna start screwing with that let's let's do another save for us for us mess up something big time let's get the tractor out a little further okay yeah so we're we're just gonna raise this up and we're gonna pretend like there is an actual culvert down there um if i change this to a square yeah it's the wrong angle
actually looks pretty good there, but let's um You have to be really careful with the raise tool because it'll uh, it'll create mountains really quickly that you you don't really want. All right, I like that. Now let's bring this back down to the smallest and kind of make this a little more indented here because it's the ditch. Um, yeah, I don't want to go too crazy with that though. And then we'll grab this texture here. Just kind of darken that up. And then we'll put a couple more shrubs back in there and then we should be good. Yeah, we'll call that good. Okay. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to put uh, a tree back in. Uh, so let's go to trees, and we had a, a nice big elm tree, large American elm over here. Uh, but why don't we put it more over this way, because it's not really going to be in the way of anything if we put it here. That costs us $4,000, man. That's expensive. All right, and then maybe, what's this? A downy service berry. Could put a couple of birch trees in. Four hundred bucks for that. I don't know. Is that gonna look weird though? Because it's like the only birch tree in the whole area. Ooh, what about a willow? Nah, I, I think I want to stick with elm just because that's what everything else is. Um, so we should be able to put like a little guy here. And maybe is that going to cause a problem if we put this here? Let's go a little smaller than that. Yeah, let's put one right here. I think I don't think that'll be an issue. Okay, that's it for the trees. Those suckers are expensive, man. Almost. I almost should have held that a little closer to this one. That's okay. I don't think that's a problem. Okay, good. So we got some some trees back, and I'm liking the way things are looking here. This should work out pretty darn good. Um, all right, so guys, I think that's going to wrap up this episode here. So the next episode is going to be us um, setting up auto drive and the course blade to work together. And if we do it all right, we should be able to fully, like 100%, automate our hay harvest. So, yeah. That is coming up in the next episode. Guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.